So this is how she talks, of course, 2022. I am going to be talking about exploring HashiCorp Vault and Argo CD, the GitOps way, or the GitOps way as I interpret it. I am Tracy Holmes. If you do not know who I am, I am at Tracy P. Holmes across the board everywhere. Uh, and before I get started, oh, and I'm a developer advocate at a company called CodeFresh. Uh, before I get started, I want to let you all know my current location has exceptionally high winds and tornado warnings today. Uh, so if I suddenly freeze or disappear, that will probably be the root cause. Okay, let's keep going. So GitOps and Argo CD, what exactly are these things? Um, if you are here, you probably already know about Vault. So I'll get back to that later. But my title mentioned GitOps and Argo CD. So again, what exactly are these things? All right, so if you're not familiar with GitOps, head over to opengitops.dev, which is like the official page of the GitOps working group. In short, GitOps is a paradigm that incorporates best practices applied to the application development workflow all the way to the operating infrastructure of a system. So there are four main principles, and I'm gonna let you know what those are with a little bit of extra on the end. The system must be described in a declarative manner. So in practice, this typically means Kubernetes manifests, Kubernetes manifests, I need more coffee, I'm sorry. Uh, the definition of the system is versioned and audited. So in practice, this is typically stored in Git. A software agent automatically pulls the Git state and matches the platform state. So in practice, this is for our purposes today, Argo CD, but you also have Flux, which would do pretty much the same thing. And the state is continuously reconciled. So this means that any changes happening in Git should also be reflected in the system as well as the opposite scenario. Additionally, there are some benefits of using GitOps, which are deploying faster and more often, easier and quicker error handling and recovery, self-documenting deployments. And most importantly, you also get the complete elimination of configuration drift. And you know I meant that because my, high, my, my voice got really high pitched. Uh, the benefits can make it easier to handle the applications and allow teams to deliver quality software faster or hopefully faster. All right, let's switch over to what Argo CD is. Uh, the CD in Argo means continuous delivery. A GitOps tool, so Argo CD is a GitOps tool. I'm sorry, I got distracted by our streaming stuff. Uh, a Git, Argo CD is a GitOps tool that follows this approach of a Git-based workflow. It's a continuous, continuous delivery tool for Kubernetes that's essentially a GitOps controller and it does two-way synchronization. So Argo continuously monitors running applications. It'll compare the live state against the desired state in Git and applies it to the cluster. So basically it will tell you what you have and make sure that what you have is actually what you want. And this happens in both ways. So it will go from Git to the cluster and it'll also go the other way from the cluster to Git. So GitOps, relies on Git as the single source of truth for declarative configuration and active re reconciliation. So what does that mean? Well, this means that Argo CD implements active reconciliation by automatically monitoring your cluster, detecting any manual changes that aren't in the Git state, and adopting the GitOps methodology provides transparency between the application configuration. Basically, it makes, you, it, makes it easier for you to make sure that everything matches with what you want it to match. And if it doesn't match, it gives you an easy way to make sure that that happens. Okay, so next, let's talk about secrets. All right, so why are secrets important anyway? And can I use them with GitOps? Well, a secret is anything, and I want you to think about this, that you want to tightly control access to. So in our realm, it's usually API encryption keys, passwords, certificates, and secrets are important because you typically want to keep your secrets secret. And yes, you can use them with GitOps. But the truth is there is no single accepted practice on how secrets are managed with GitOps. And we can all agree, you probably don't want to keep secrets in Git where they're left open to anyone who has access to your repo. And you definitely don't want to keep any unencrypted secrets in there. Now, I can also argue because I'm not on either side of the fence staunchly, and some security people may also agree, you don't really want to commit secrets to Git. Like 
there's a lot of hesitance in encrypting and committing. Secrets managers are GitOps friendly. You want to commit stuff to get and make it the source of truth, but honestly, do you want to commit everything? Like, wouldn't you want your secrets outside of your orchestrator or in this instance, Kubernetes? So in my abstract, I mentioned Bitnami sealed secrets, but honestly, there are more than a few tools out there. I'll talk about two. So one of the tools I hear about is Kubernetes secrets. The, the And what I'm showing you is not encrypted uh, in the diagram, but uh, Kubernetes actually includes a native secret resource that you can use in your applications. So by default, these secrets are not encrypted in any way. And the base 64 encoding used should never be seen as a security feature. While there are ways to encrypt the Kubernetes secrets within the cluster itself, we're more interested in encrypting them outside the cluster so that we can store them externally in Git and so we can make it fall under GitOps. I left that with Kubernetes secrets. I apologize. I just messed that up, you all. Hold on really quick. Sorry, Lizzie. You see nothing. I will be back in two shakes. All right, what I was gonna say is we're gonna talk about um, Vietnami sealed secrets. So let me get back to that slide, apologies. I left the title as Kubernetes secrets. We just talked about that. It's not necessarily outside of the realm of what I'm about to talk about though. So Bitnami Seal Secrets Controller is a con Kubernetes controller that you can install in the cluster and performs a single task. It converts sealed secrets that can be committed to Git to plain secrets that can be used in your application. So uh, Bitnami Sealed Secrets uh, claim to fame on their README is it solves the, I can manage all of my Kubernetes configs and Git except secrets problem. Um, and so what it does is it encrypts your secret into a sealed secret, which is safe to store in a public repository. The sealed secret can be decrypted only by the controller running in the target cluster and nobody else, not even the original author is able to obtain the original secret from sealed secret. So you, you technically don't have to worry about anybody seeing any stuff that they're not supposed to see. And I honestly forgot to add SOPS to this. I'm so sorry. So SOPS is S-O-P-S for those of you that want to search for it. But uh, SOPS is Mozilla Secrets Operations. And it's a CLI that you can also use to encrypt Kubernetes secrets. All right, so there are a few disadvantages. So if you use these Kubernetes secrets encryption tools enough, your secrets are encrypted and committed to version control, which is what GitOps says it wants. Thou shalt not use a secrets manager that does not commit a secret in version control. But I repeat, as a pattern, and for the other side of the fence, it's actually important to not do this, right? So the brief disadvantages or questions that I've heard from a few people or even read across the web about committing to version control. And also keep in mind, I'm still learning this GitOps stuff myself, so don't take it as, as signed, sealed, and delivered, but how do you get to know who used the secret or if it even got used? What happens if you need to rotate the secret out? Like, do you find and replace it across all of your repos? And what happens if someone commits a decrypted secret? So I'm not going to go too far in depth on that. Um, but if this talk gets picked up again, I'll try to focus on those a bit more. Or if I have time, maybe I'll write about it. But those are very valid questions. All right. So here's where we start talking about Vault. We finally made it. And again, if you're here, you probably already know what Vault is. But in short, Vault is an identity-based secrets and encryption management system. I took that right off a of HashiCorp site. Now, I don't know if I've said this yet. So I've got this note in my speaker notes to remind me. This talk was actually inspired by discussions I've had with two people I respect a lot. I will not say their names. One is adamant Vault is natively GitOps friendly. The other says it's not. And so this is why you're seeing both sides of the talk and I'm not committing to either side, but I love having both perspectives. And like I'm saying, it's still, I'm still learning. So the perspectives work for me. What makes Vault not GitOps friendly anyway, though? And if you think about it, is it actually not GitOps friendly, like by default or without just a minuscule amount of work? So Vault is its own controller. It has an awareness of the diff for you. And from a security standpoint, you just need to know that you need to change the secret. You don't really need to know what the secret is. And I did look at a few companies, uh, websites and blogs, and I think I only found one place that didn't knock Vault for not being 
natively GitOps friendly for what it's worth. Um, it's trying to reconcile the state of what it thinks is going on versus the actual secret. And it's declarative. It'll find something isn't right and overwrite and renew the secret. Also, remember principle two on that slide earlier? I gave you my version of it, but off of the, the GitOps site, it says versioned and immutable for, for principle two. The desired state is stored in a way that enforces immutability, versioning, and retains a complete version history. Now, there's an argument to be made that while people automatically think about Git when referencing versioned and immutable, does it have to be in version control? like Git, Vault does this because it does have access control and it also has ways to lessen the blast radius. So your application and the version control history associated with the application don't actually need to know the secret. If you're using the Vault agent injector with Kubernetes, you're using Vault state store and reconciliation mechanism. So your app doesn't need to know what the state of the secret is. And see, looky, I deployed this app to Argo CD without having to commit any secrets to Git. I let Vault handle rotating, issuing, managing, et cetera, for those secrets. And it's versioned. I used KVB2, and it's still storing secrets. You'll also notice there's no secret related to the, deep, the database name or the password. And the only token you see is the one related to the service account. And before you all say it, because I'm not looking at YouTube chat, yes, I realized getting things to work was never the actual issue of my talk or the point, but I was happy that gummit that I got this to work. Also, I do realize that some people would still rather use environment variables. Um, if you like using ENV variables and are committed to using them, you can use a template file where you source the environment variable. So change is, is good. Now, I know there are some of you out there that probably don't want to change anything you're doing, like your app, add another sidecar, et cetera. So here's what you can do. You can either use Argo Vault plugin, which works with Kubernetes secrets, uh, and or you could use secret store CSI driver and the vault provider for it, which will provide a volume mount to use your secrets from vault without an additional site or without a side sidecar container at all. Sorry. If you have a secret store, you don't need to commit your secrets to version control, but vault will auto magically detect any differences for you, like detect the changes in vault and your app needs to have some awareness like a hot reload, etc. And side note, and this is a neutral side note at that, part of GitOps says configuration must be declarative. You can't configure Vault declaratively. You can absolutely still use Terraform for your configurations or the Vault config operator, which is uh, actually a community tool. So if you wanna see what the Vault config operator looks like in practice, uh, I've linked that repo in the slides and I will make sure or try my best to remember to add the links when I share the slides on Discuss. Um, it also uses Argo Sync Wave to sync things that need to be reconciled. And I have a link to that also. So in the end, at the end of the day, my question is this, and yes, I realize I'm giving you 10 minutes of your life back. Do we really need to commit our secrets in version control? Is that the only thing keeping you from GitOps? Let me know in one of the chats. Either way, I'm not telling you where I sit, stand, or fall on this particular topic. Again, I am Tracy P. Holmes across the board. Uh, again, I'll try my best to provide links when I provide my slides in the Discuss forum. And thank you so much for having me.